Hey everyone, this is Will, and I'm super excited about a brand new video series where we're gonna be walking through every single feature of Oracle for X series. Now, Oracle for X series is the uh, free control software for my connectivity that allows you to set up and configure both your audio and MIDI interfaces. Uh, this video in particular is gonna be a just general walkthrough of each of the pages you'll find so you know where to go to do what, and then we'll do a deeper dive in on each of those pages. Now, uh, it's worth mentioning that uh, as we continue to update Oracle, the pages are gonna evolve the appearance may change a bit, but the fundamentals should not change. Now, the first thing you notice, I've got an audio interface and a MIDI interface uh, connected here. If you're using an audio interface, you'll see an audio tab and you can go into this page and that's where you can set sample rate, bit depth and do uh, audio routing here. And uh, depending on which interface you have connected depends on how this looks. This is a Play Audio 12 that I have have connected. Uh, but if you've got an audio 4C, it'll look a little different there. And again, we'll do a deep dive on the audio page uh, based on the interface a little bit later. Next up is MIDI routing. We can click it in the MIDI routing page here, and this is where we can route MIDI from all our sources, which are gonna be on the left, to destinations on the right. Uh, so I could click into a source here, and you can see all the destinations that I can uh, route to. I can click this button to rename um, uh, rename that source as well too. Next up, we can filter and remap both on the input and output. So I could click on a source here and say, let's take the input of DIN1 and let's filter it or let's remap. Or I can say, let's take the output of DIN1 and let's filter or remap. And that's a really cool page to do some advanced MIDI control stuff. Next up is presets. So this is where we can create presets for iConnect to be the interfaces uh, that support this functionality. So interfaces prior to Mio XM and XL, um, like the Play Audio 12, Mini 4 Plus, and the earlier Mio series don't have this functionality. But for interfaces that do, it's super cool. We can save and load presets as well as backup and restore presets, uh, which allows us to uh, create a preset and uh, send it you know, via email so someone can load it onto uh, their interface uh, remotely, which is pretty cool. Uh, next up is RTP Network Mini. This is on interfaces with uh, Ethernet ports. But we can click in here, set our IP address, and we can configure all of our RTP network connections uh, there, which is super great. Next up is USB host port reservation. This is where we link our USB MIDI controllers that are connected to our interface to specific host ports. Uh, and depending on your interface, depends on how many host ports you have here. But on my Mio XM, I have up to eight host ports, which means up to eight USB uh, MIDI controllers that could be connected there. Uh, next, we have a firmware tab where you could go in and see the current version of firmware, uh, load from a file if you already have it uh, downloaded and installed, or if you're connected to the internet, you can click install to install the newest version of the firmware. And uh, if you have an interface with multiple USB ports and you're connected to your computer using the wrong USB port, um, then you'll get a message here when you go into this window that tells you to connect to the correct port there. Um, next, I wanna show you uh, the device information section here. So if I click this I, uh, you'll see some information about your device like serial number, hardware version, firmware, firmware version. You can also perform a factory reset to reset this completely back to zero, clear all your MIDI settings, or this is a feature I use a lot where you can reboot your device remotely, which is super helpful when you're connected via ethernet uh, and you can't don't have physical access to your device to reach it. Uh, finally, this I button in the upper right hand corner, if I click this, is gonna give me and show me software information, particularly let me know which version of Oracle for X series I'm using, which is helpful when you're communicating with support. And if you need some extra support, you can click this question mark here, which is gonna take you to the getting started with Oracle for X series uh, page. We're gonna see some video content that's gonna walk you through uh, using Oracle for X series. And then you can click this I connectivity icon here. And this is gonna take you to the support center to where if you're not able to solve your problem via a video or by uh, figuring it out yourself, you can submit a ticket as well as navigate to the knowledge base. Uh, finally, if you need to update Oracle for X series or you're checking for updates, you can go in the upper left-hand corner and go to check for updates here. And that's gonna let you see if there's a update that is available to you for Oracle for X series. So again, that's a quick overview, uh, very quick overview of each of the tabs so you know where to go when you're trying to do whatever you're trying to do. And we'll link to specific deep dives of those tabs as we create them each week and come back and update this description so you can link out from there to find that. So again, I'm super excited for this video series. It's gonna be super helpful to help you understand Oracle for X series. Thanks so much for watching this and we'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.